Hey, Earl, uh, today's podcast is brought to us by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. That's Mr. Hepner to you, Mr. Oh, Scott Novel. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Earl Hepner. Uh, look, it's free audiobook. You know, I, I you seem like a man that likes to read. I don't like to read. You don't like to read? I like listening to things. I have this little thing in my ear and people tell me what to do. Oh, well, hey, you can make your own decisions, you know. You can count to three. You can count to ten. You can listen to books to however you uh, want to. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I screw people. You screw people. People tell me to screw people, and I screw them. Well, <laughs> well, you get a free audio book, Earl. If you, the beauty is that you don't have to read anymore. Are you telling me there's a book out there that's going to tell me to screw things? Uh, What's a possible book that could ever tell me to screw things? A possible book that could ever tell you to... Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm sorry? Fifty Shades of Grey. What is that? See, you're a referee who believes in black and white. That's what you wear. That you just see everything in a black and white sort I of I wear setting. these stripes because it's what I believe. Yeah, the, 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 there's no shades of gray. Let me tell you, Earl, there's 50 shades of gray out there. Are you telling me we live in a multi-tiered world where there's no such things as black and white, but just an ever-changing shade between? No. E.L. James is telling you that. Oh, and I wouldn't even I, I, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm not going to read you the book. You're not even going to read it yourself. You can get a free audiobook download of Fifty Shades of Grey book one or book two. Doesn't matter where you start. What can I listen to it on? Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. You can have those and there's over 100,000 titles to choose from Earl. Think of how many shades of gray that is. That's more than 50. It is more. That's than a 50. lot. Of, that's a lot. That's a lot of what? That's a lot. If you don't get it, you're screwing yourself. Then it's Earl screwed Earl. Story of my life. You are listening to Curtain Jerks on the Comedy Podcast Network. I am Scott Narber. I am Steve Sears. And we are comedians who live and work in Hollywood, bringing the funny of all the professional wrestling to you each and every week on this podcast, Curtain Jerks. Bringing the funny, too hot to handle, too cold to hold. Call the Ghostbusters if you want to get old. Yeah. I don't remember the rest that of the That sounds about right. It's close. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Because we're on our own, Scott. And somebody's getting married. That's right. Big congratulations are in order. By the time that this airs, greatness will have already occurred in television history. Spike TV will have had the greatest moment in, in all of television. Nuptials. Nuptials. Suptuals. Sensual nuptials. Oh, God. I am... I- I am so excited. You just found out today. I've known for a week. You were talking about the marriage, the impending marriage of Bully Ray and Brooke Hogan. Yes. Very yes, I am. Stuff. It's like Romeo and Juliet. It's the it's the Capulets and the Montagues because, you the know. The Rays and the Hogans. Yeah. I hope all the Rays show up. Mercur- Mercutio and Tybalt. Oh, this is so exciting. As much as Brother Devon is with aces and eights and so upset uh, with his brother he's got to be there yeah i bet he wishes he could still be a part of it but he's crying on the inside i wonder if aces and eights are gonna jump in and do something nasty oh man there see that's that's the tough part there's so genesis much- is this sunday scott genesis is this sunday this sunday sunday scott this sunday is genesis last sunday what last sunday no yes no yep oh my god they're still getting married right <laughs> Genesis? Genesis, Genesis is last mar- Sunday. Scott. Genesis is marrying Nintendo. Okay, good. Finally, yeah. Uh, talk about and Romeo they made and a Turbo Graphic sixteen. Oh, jeez. Nobody likes. Yeah, I was about to say that's the kid that no one wants to play with, except for Bonk's Adventure. Always Bonk? intrigued. Never played. Slaughterhouse was on uh, Turbo Graphic. Splatterhouse. What I say? Slaughterhouse. That's what I thought of. That's a book. Splatterhouse. Was you know what? Pretty Probably fun. available on Audible. You think so? I don't know. Uh, check the advertisement that happened before this. <laughs> uh. It's you are blow. You can't even say it. You're so excited. Are I, you tearing up already? For I this am. Wedding? I think Spike might be there. Little Spike Dudley. Maybe Big Dick Dudley will be there. Sign Who guy. Was Big Dick Dudley. He was the Dudley with the big dick. Oh, oh, that was why they called him that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, they were before Dudleys, which That's I can't say. That's when they say. just decided to side them with a great Kali. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Kali was just the dick. Mm-hmm. And then there was another guy that was it the was Dudley. It was even bigger than great Kali. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, you know, c- who knows what's going to happen? Is this a whole thing where Bully Ray is going to turn on everybody? And, uh, you know, it it brings up the point that Hogan's so pissed off at Bully Ray saying, you're not good enough for my daughter, which is a fair point because his first name is Bully. True. You wouldn't want your, you know, your, your daughter little girl. to marry someone with the name of Asshole or or wife beater, or, wife beater Narver. I that would be really tough. Or what about rapist Sears? That would just that's too telling. Pederas Ranta. Yeah, that's it's too much. It's too much. Uh, or uh, what's another one? Who are other people we know that we could put in horrible de- descriptors in front of? <laughs> oh, oh, Holocaust War Zeka. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, genocidal Morrison. No, oh, yeah, that's true. That's all there. That's yeah, all there. see, these are it's these tough. Are... It's tough. It's tough. It's tough as a father. I think it's tough yeah. as a father when you've got to sort of. I mean, is he gonna walk her down the aisle? It's, it's tough when you just gotta let your uh, your daughter go, especially when he he wants to walk her down the aisle, and then he's probably gonna be wearing a really nice tux, and then everybody's gonna be applauding, and there's gonna be a crowd. So then, what's he gonna do? He's gonna tear that tux in half, and then he's gonna feel really stupid because it was a like, rental. Yeah, and it's like, oh, this wasn't my moment. I mean, but how much does it cost to rent a bright yellow tux with a red undershirt, with a red dress shirt? I don't know. Check uh, uh, TNA's. I'll, yeah, I'll, che- I'll check my Quinceanera store. I'll find out. Oh, yeah. yeah. the uh, That little offshoot in the TNA wrestling impact the shop Quinceanera zone. The section, yeah, in the TNA shop zone. I'm, I'm so excited. It's going to happen, and we're going to give a full report once it goes down. I, I'm... Oh. So this is, this is so good. So you'll already know what's happening, and then you'll see. You'll just know that we are seething with anticipation. We're gonna be. I'm gonna be tweeting. I'm gonna be sitting at the TV tweeting that as it happens. Punk rock, go fuck yourselves. Yeah, I think it's time for some real excitement, and that's a wedding on TV on a wrestling show. You know what? I don't want to go to the Rumble anymore. I want to go to this wedding. Well, you know what? Actually, it's really weird. We have a little bit of audio of the caterers talking about the, it what we have audio for the caterers talking well we're recording impact. on wednesday i know but they're so already they're getting up. in they're in the impact zone they're already getting ready they're using those heating trays I, that food's gonna dry out let's find out god these carrots look so stewed i don't know if they're gonna keep long do you think i should do another sterno can armand they'll keep fine are you sure because I'm this sure. is a really big deal all right this is this is from what i understand i don't watch this show this program is very alien to me. All I know is that I bring food to Orlando from Dade. I drive it to Orlando, mm. and I bring it here mm. to the impacted zone, mm. and I set up the food, and I light these little Cerno cans, mm. and I want to make sure that these candles these candles say, and they keep the food warm, because these little Cerno cans look like candles. Have you talked to Hulk? Oh, Mr. Hogan. Oh, I call him Hulk. Because I, bl- I thought that's what he said his name was. Oh, I think he said, I think this is what he said. I remember because when we both met him, mm-hmm. we were both very nervous mm-hmm. because we were in the impacted zone. Mm-hmm. And he said, he came up to us and he said, mm-hmm. all right, brothers, I'm Hulk. Oh, that's the good impression, you Armand. Like you should good. you should do impressions. Do you think so? You should you get a so? YouTube channel. No, no I, I, listen, here's, here's that, uh, here's that guy who does that video with the cats. Okay. Hmm. And that was me licking my nipple. Oh, Mr. my God. Mr. Pregnant on YouTube. You have the longest nipples, Armand. Isn't that incredible? I think that's not his hair. Hulk's? Yeah. I think he has the broom handle broken off and his hair is hanging down from inside a bandana. Did you see his daughter? It looks like she is a broom. Oh, snap, you dirty bitch. And I think that's uh, that was the audio of the caterers getting ready at the, do they call it the impacted zone? They call it the impacted zone. Got it. They don't know anything about the wedding either, but they are really excited. Hey, I'm excited too. Everybody should be excited. I'm uh, I'm blasting right now, Scott. <laughs> oh. I am blasting with excitement. You know, this don't, these are the don't, moments you live don't for. Don't look at me as if you were going to describe what I was wearing. I okay? wasn't. I wasn't. Please don't. No, it, even though it's silly. This tuxedo <laughs> I was wearing before I have I wasn't invited to the wedding, so I wear my tuxedo before. Well, you got the emphasis wrong. You have heavier red than yellow. That's true. That's true. I, this, these are the moments I live for as a wrestling fan. Yes, I love seeing the punk rock stuff, the, the epic stuff that happens in wrestling. But the moments like this, the moments that just live 
when they write that book, The Death of TNA Wrestling. Oh, and they, th- this, this is an be, entire chapter? Yeah, this is going to be on the cover. This is going to be one of those photos that's just right there on the front. And they're like, uh, and Russo wasn't even booking. You know, and Billy Ray wearing a tuxedo with no sleeves. I can't wait for the shoot interviews when this is all said and done. You think this is a work, Scott? You don't think he's really in love with the... Uh... I with know he's Brooke deeply Hulk in love, Hogan? and I'm I'm sure the shoot interview is going to be talking about how upset he was of how they mangled their love on screen. Yeah, the, <laughs> that they didn't do an accurate enough portrayal of the wedding <laughs> on TV. Yeah, that of the wedding on TV, Scott. I'm just saying the sentence is ridiculous. Oh, it's so good, so good. Be if you're not excited, you got to look at this again with fresh eyes. Go into the go into the bathroom, wash those eyes out, and go watch impact wrestling yeah and the rest of it's a bathroom break this is the time you sit down with friends and family and you put pizzas and hands and hold those hands together and you eat <laughs> you eat and be merry well uh as i said last week this week we have rejected touts are back this one is weird this one came on its own flash drive and it has a, a bow on it oh yeah it's it's i uh, i'm well, put it in the norton to make sure that it's not you're not getting a chinese flash drive that's full of uh, trade secrets hey if I get trade secrets, that's a way to little make a little scratch on the side. I guess that's what touts really are doing these days. Yeah, so the rejected touts that WWE won't play, uh, we're going to play them instead. What the hell did that mean? <laughs> Chinese trade secrets? No, no, no. What, it's like, I guess that's what... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I saw you making that face, and I saw me making that face, and I was like, shit, that doesn't make any sense at all. That that's doesn't... not what touts are. No. but uh, there Touts were... are tweets, but on They're video, video tweets. But we don't have the capabilities yet. We're working on it. We've we're got, we got high-tech engineers working on this. We're going to have touts on screen soon. That's true. So right now, I guess podcast, that's what uh, high tech engineers are all about. That's right. <laughs> they do techs that are high. Uh, so here, here's a rejected tout. Dude, RVD, Bully Ray, you're going to need something for your honeymoon, dude. So here you go. Bag of weed. Because when you're on your honeymoon with Brooke Hogan and she's on top of you screaming, what you going to do? You're going to wish you're as high as Rob Van Dam. What a great friend. That's a really nice friend. Yeah, it's really nice. I wonder where they're honeymooning. Oh. Uh, hmm. Orlando? I'm no, they're s- in Orlando. I'm going to say Linda's house. <laughs> like in a in a cabana in the back. Oh, it's better than like on the pull out couch in the living room, right? Ooh, hey, that's a, that's like your fourth go. Yeah, when you're lounging around eating sandwiches and you don't have to be in separate bungalows now that they're married. No, now it's now it's legal and they won't burn in hell. Yeah, think that's spiritually legal. That's a good way to put it, Scott. Okay, it's been a long time coming, but it's time for the race to curtain jerks GM. I'm excited. This has been a long time coming, Scott. It's been a long time coming. We've got a lot of candidates. They, it was going to be the Raw GM, but Vince McMahon turned us down and said, no, he's not having any part of it. And so what, we'd re- what we really realized is that we need a little bit more discipline and focus here on the show. Oh, yeah. Now. Look at this. Look at this tablecloth. This is outrageous. Hey, look, when you're in the penthouse, sometimes things are a little bit outrageous, Scott. We have a plate that has reindeers on it. Those are dogs with antlers. Either way, this is how out of control this crap is. What else we got in here? There is a Nintendo Wii U in here that no one plays because the system is no fun. Also, three ninja swords. Uh, sa- samurai swords. Ninja swords. Ninja swords? I think so. That's a little cumbersome for a ninja. Uh, there. It's like a. It's a, it's a, like a ninja warrior. And there's a. a there's a Pez dispenser of the sh- the evil French chef from Ratatouille. There's also a Jacksonville Jaguars bobblehead. I don't even know what player that is. We need order in here. Who, who's going to bring us that order, Scott? It's not. Look, there's been changes in administration of what's been going on here at Comedy Podcast Network headquarters. We can't rely on them anymore. You know who it's going to be? It's going to be a Curtain Jerks general manager. Somebody can really lay the smack down, but not the rock. No. He's no. too busy uh, doing rock concerts and uh, making... Anyone who's 30 years old groan. And it's very, very difficult to catch the timber and tenebre of his voice. <laughs> yes, and to define those words. That's true. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to have here on this episode is we're going to have a survival debate. Now you, the fans, you, the listeners, are going to vote for who you want to survive and move on in the race to Curtain Jerks GM. So... 
the two candidates that will make the- way make way all right well the first candidate has has walked up to the microphone he is here make way the candidate is right here and this <laughs> oh no brown paper bag i was wondering what that smell was i'm randy orton it's randy orton everyone but i'm not the candidate yep the candidate is here on the podium and this brown <laughs> yep bag bag paper paper bag bag satchel oh god i'm so glad that you're not debating randy orton not a knock on you i like you as a guy but you talk a little slow for the fans release <laughs> the candidate <laughs> from thine brown paper bag bag satchel yeah okay for those of you that might be a new listener or catching up the candidate is randy orton's feces Randy Orton, when he declared candidacy, we thought it was going to be Randy, but instead... Scott, is this really necessary? I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't want to interrupt, but I feel like... It, is it I'm necessary to picture. explain? I, what do you think he was... Something in, the, in that brown paper bag, and I want to know what's in it's it. It's his shit, man. What? It's his shit. It declare it like it's probably the same shit, too, because it's in it. That bag looks really gross and sad, and there's oh, a lot of flies. like when you dab a piece of pizza with a paper towel to get the fat off it, and you can see through it? I can make out the outline of something inside that brown paper bag. Yeah, it's shit. I bet you a dollar that is not. Who would bring shit in a brown paper Randy bag? Randy Orton. Yes. No. <laughs> All right. Yes, look, Scott Narver I'm going Steve to, Sears. I'm going to introduce the other candidate that is here. Uh, the other candidate that is here is Rey Mysterio. Hola, que pasó? Uh, not not I, much, I Rey can, Mysterio. Uh, Oh, uh, think... we have several phone books for you, uh, Ray. If you oh, can just uh, oh, okay, there, there you oh, go. Oh, yeah. Oh, ah, ah. Uh, Ray Mysterio ah. and Randy Orton's feces. Thank you very much for joining us today on the first elimination debate. Pero pastor, pastor, qué pasa? Chipotle. Uh, gracias. Ah, sí. Okay, guys. So, uh, what we're gonna do is, you guys are gonna have the forum to say what you're gonna bring for the listener. For what the audience can have from a, a curtain jerk. What jerks? do you advocate that can change the shape of the curtain jerks podcast for a new dimension, a new year, and a new paradigm in terms of podcasting? Which sounds like broadcasting, but it's for your iPod podcasting. Yes, you guys will have five minutes. Do with that time what you will, and this is a time for you to debate it out. And the listener will decide who they want to survive. All right, uh, the uh, the floor is open. Okay, so uh, I oh would like okay to take this opportunity to allow my candidates he's eating up all the time opponent to speak first. Okay. Well, I, I, I keep Ray uh, mm. Mysterio. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Now's when the time of when I want to say to my fans. The podium is yours. Okay. The, uh, muchas gracias. I smell like a uh, burro. Uh, okay. So here's, here's what I t- say to my fans is I think curtain jerks uh, should, uh, you know, uh, when you think about it, it's it's done all in English, right? Like, so it should be. Translate it into Spanish, you know, Mexicano. So everything that is said in English, but in English, should be then said in Spanish. Okay, just to clarify, just to clarify, what you're saying is you'd like every segment on Curtain Jerks to be first in English and then said again in Spanish. In Spanish. That's twice Curtain Jerks, you know? You get twice as much because everything is said in English, Alberto English, is then said in Mexicano, Alberto Mexico. Right. Uh, I also, earlier, did you say Dick Abersol Ingles? Dick Abersol Ingles. Dick Abersol. So what do you think you're going to bring, Randy, huh? And you and your, your poop? I'll take this opportunity to speak for my candidate and say what this show really needs is... An in-depth analysis of professional wrestling every week and a critical breakdown of every segment on every wrestling show. 
including press releases as well as an editorial section in which people can really talk about their opinions about wrestling and why they're better workers than those that actually perform in ring. You know what I'm <laughs> talking about. Bag of feces. Randy, that's very nice that you're speaking on behalf of your feces and clearly you want you want more in-depth analysis on the show. Is, is there something that the, the candidate if is... If oh, Raw oh. is three hours, Curtain Jerks should be six hours breaking down every critical event that took place on a wrestling show. On top of that, I think Raw should be 12 hours, so that way Spanish speakers can understand what is said. So, uh, wait, uh, Ray, are you advocating for a second production of Raw that you would be able to hear the English commentary... Excuse me, as well as the Spanish commentary? Well, no, you guys are speaking English, right? Cada persona quiere inglés. And then uh, sí. Rey Mysterio, I would speak in Spanish. Oh, so you're advocating as becoming a uh, commentator on Curtain Cur I Cur just say everything that you guys say. I say all your dick jokes, and I say it in Spanish. Cada persona your penis. Oh, well, that's... I I'm, feel like, Scott, I mean, I feel like that's... Also, you should have children on this show. Children? To talk about their favorite wrestler, who's not John Cena... It's Rey Mysterio. Randy Orton has kids. You do? Oh, that's right. You have daughters. I've got a daughter. <laughs> oh, you, oh, oh, right. You have a daughter. I miss my daughter. <laughs> okay. Well, Randy, look, I got to ask, is there something that the, uh, I hate to say this, but it's, it's just the right thing to do. Is there something that the candidate wants to say? Let me check. After quietly listening to my candidate whisper <laughs> deep, deep into my ear, and I could feel the warmth of the candidate on my face. Why is it still warm? <laughs> then I believe this candidate has a few things to say into the microphone. Bag of shit, <laughs> if you please. Oh, he's holding the bag up to the microphone. Yeah, it, I, can we gotta wash that microphone. Oh, well, it's got a little guard on it. It smells like B.O. <laughs> and I think that will do it. Well, that was five minutes. Um, so there we have it. Randy uh, Orton's feces. And uh, Ray Mysterio, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, so there you have it, fans. Round one. You vote. And candidates will notify both of you based on our electoral college, which is Twitter. <laughs> yes, you can vote for who you want to survive in the Curtain Jerks GM. Uh, you can vote on Twitter, at Curtain Jerks. You can vote on our Facebook. Scott, you are trembling with anticipation of the political system. No, nope. Just looking at you, you are so excited right now. No, I didn't see where the bag of shit went. I'm a little worried. <laughs> yeah, Orton left, but I don't remember seeing him carry that bag. <laughs> Watch your step. Facebook.com slash Curtain Jerks. Twitter at Curtain Jerks or email us Curtain Jerks at gmail.com. Send us your vote. Let us know who you want to survive. So that brings us to jerk tweets. Every week, go to twitter.com backslash curtain jerks slash curtain jerks. I always do that. Backslash. The backslash, uh, that means everything gets read backwards. Ugh, stupid. Just kidding. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Hashtag jerk tweets. We read them every week on the show. Your questions, comments, anything you got. This is a follow up from last week. This is an ongoing thing we're going to do because we have we've been given four. Uh, mania matches to book because it's it's assumed that in the WWE they have the four main matches book. So this was Chris Brickley five and also Jay Westwood eighty six said the same thing. He wanted to know the uh, the the title matches and Taker's opponent for WrestleMania. So that's what we are tackling this week. Last week we tackled the World Heavyweight Championship match between Christian, the Royal Rumble winner, yeah, and Dolph Ziggler, World Heavyweight Champion, cashing in on, on Alberto Del Rio. So. Who better, Scott, who better than comedians living in Los Angeles than to decide the booking of the greatest wrestling pay-per-view event of the year? I don't know. Who better? I uh, Draws? Who but draws? Who but draws? Us. Us. Uh, 
You know, this was an idea I had for Christian a long time ago, and I forgot to mention it on the show. Uh, was this the Royal Rumble trainer? Uh, the, this is the idea of Christian being a Rumble master. Yeah, I think I thought you've told me this. I thought you mentioned it on the show. Have I mentioned this before? If I mentioned it before on the show, I apologize. I'm mentioning it again for new listeners. That Christian, I think, should be the Royal Rumble master. That you should see him in backstage vignettes where they go to interview him, and he, you just see him doing these kind of uh, hip movements and with his arms, resting his arms. You yeah. never know what he's doing. He's always like, he's always training for something, and he's hiding it. It's just like, oh, uh, hey, uh, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? And then in his matches, that he's always he's, throwing somebody over he's the top throwing rope. somebody over the top rope, and then getting excited about it, not worrying about the pin, not getting the pinfalls even, like he's yeah. losing. But he's always throwing people out, throwing the ref out, throwing everybody out that he can. And then, That'd be great. And then security comes out of the ring and he throws them he out. He throws too. them out. And then he reveals like, yeah, I'm a rumble master. I bet you could do an element like that where it's also like you never knew who was going to get a stoner from a stoner. A stoner? <laughs> you never knew who was going to get stoned from Stone Cold. You never knew who was going to get a stunner from Stone Cold. You never know who's going to get stoned from RVD. Yeah. You never know who's going to get a stunner from Stone Cold. Yes. And that was like, and every time someone was in the ring with him, you're like, ah, I really hope he stuns him. And then he stuns him. Yeah. Christian would be the guy who's like. I really hope he throws them out of the ring. Yeah. Oh, he threw yeah, them out of the ring. Yeah. Oh, they're going to work together. They didn't. Yeah. So this week, we're booking the Undertaker match. Undertaker. He's fought not 20 guys, but he's had 20 matches at WrestleMania because he doubled up a couple of times. Yeah, and you only get to see him. What, now you only get to see him at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's it. He won't show up to anything else at all. He might show up at Mania just to, like, you know, get his parking validated. Well, right. That's what he's showing up for is the is mania. Yeah. So did you mean another show by that? What, did I say mania? Yeah. I meant to say rumble. <laughs> like he'll show up to point at the WrestleMania sign. He'll show up to rumble to get his parking validated for mania. You know, what would be awesome for the end of the run is uh, Ru- Undertaker showing up at the rumble, winning it. And then whoever has to face him has to face the streak also. <laughs> and he's going for the belt. Hey, that's a good idea. Hey, I just thought that up. Hey, good job. Hey, thanks. Hey, booking's easy. <laughs> hey, this is great. Oh, uh, you know what? I wish those guys would work out more. They look so fucking flabby. <laughs> you know what else? That work rate is such shit. All right. So let me throw out some names. The Undertaker is a bad wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> this is easy. Man. Uh, Put me on TV. Not, I deserve to be famous. Now with that thermal. Yeah, this, 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 is, this came with the tuxedo. Did it? Yeah. Why are you wearing it on the outside? Oh, because it's cold. Oh, it's okay. cold up in the penthouse. It is cold These up in the penthouse. These windows go down to the floor <laughs> and up to the ceiling. What? And then they slide to the side. Yeah, there's there's no walls, just windows. Yeah. Hey, so let's book this I'm gonna, match. I'm going to throw out some names. See if these even see if these even uh, cut mustard, if you will. Uh, versus The Undertaker. Yeah. This WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is I, this? 29. Nine. Yeah. 29. Wow. WrestleMania is in due, is about due for a midlife crisis, right? It is. Min- oh god, <laughs> it's only gonna be, live to be sixty. Yeah, that's fucked. It's gonna get a convertible. It's losing its hair. Yeah, you think WrestleMania is not gonna go to WrestleMania sixty? I well, bet it will. You don't. Midlife dies at sixty. Mid. Midlife. When is a midlife crisis? Midlife crisis. Forty. Forty. Yeah. This this is a pre-life crisis. Pre-life. Pre-life crisis. Prenatal on, crisis on, on infinite earths. Hey, think, let's finish. Let's Taboo get this, Tuesday let's get to this jerk tweet. Okay. Well, you're actually telling me to get on track <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like. focus. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me throw some names out. MVP. Ooh, versus The Undertaker. Yeah. Huh? I'm not interested. Yeah, you're not interested? No. Uh, not even if he got his inflatable intros back and his endorsements? Yes. If Undertaker got a, an inflatable entrance and endorsements, yes, that'd be awesome. Who would endorse The Undertaker? Uh... uh uh, oh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, Coffin restaurant? case guitars. Yeah, them. They'd be That's exactly cool. what I was. Uh, the uh, Ooh, the hot tamales. The, a restaurant. Those candies, hot so, tamales. Bubba Gump. Yeah, Bubba Gump shrimp. Yeah. All right, it's not MVP. Brock Lesnar. Ooh, I'd watch that. The Rock. Uh, but he's already going to be pretty busy, Scott. Is he going to be busy? Yeah. According to us, the bookers. No. Not yet. Apparently, he is still in a talent pool that we can dip into with our talented little fingers. He's my pick. That's the Rock? The Rock is my pick. They work well together. Yeah. They work very well together. They do. Let me throw this name at you. Okay. Right? Uh, so, it's the streak versus the most dangerous man alive, Cactus Jack. 
Oh, I thought it was going to be Ken Shamrock. <laughs> yeah, that would be a shame. That would be a real shame. <laughs> In a Lion's Den match. <laughs> In a Boiler Room Lion's Den match. <laughs> Scott, it's Ken Shamrock versus The Undertaker. No! No audience. <laughs> no audience, just a red light and a bunch of steam being piped into their Lion's and Den. And your dad's den match. Yeah. <laughs> Reading the newspaper. Yeah. Oh, what, what's, what do you got on there, huh? A little bit of the wrestling? <laughs> Which one of those is the hell? And the other one is the baba face. <laughs> Oh, Swedish dad. Yeah. Okay, you're saying Cactus Jack. Yeah. Hall of Fame inductee Mick Foley as Cactus Jack versus The Undertaker. One more brutal beating. That's what he'll say after the Hall of Fame. Okay, I'm sold. Yeah, the night before, he'll t- he'll get the ring and he'll be like, and tomorrow I'm going to face The Undertaker for one brutal beating. Wait, do we, we're going to have more build up than that, right? It's not just going to be the no, night no, no. before. It, that's his last the Undertaker's promo, yeah. just kind of standing around like, Gee, I'd really like to fight somebody. <laughs> Uh, Any time now, Mr. Undertaker. Any time. We'll bring you somebody. Oh, gee whiz. You know, I got this streak in a hump. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure we'll find somebody for you. Oh, my God. I shut my head. Oh, well, look at this guy. He's got a clipboard and he's got a little headset. Maybe you want to face him. Oh, I don't want to fight Josh Matthews. No way. Jeez. All right. Okay. Uh, what about this guy right here? He's uh, he's dancing and he's eating and he's got that big disco ball and he's got all those Doritos in his hand. Oh, jeez. Brought his clay. I don't want to fight him neither. Huh? All right, okay, okay, Undertaker. Let's see what we got here. Um, jeez, uh, oh, 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 uh, what about Eve? Oh, God, where's Eve? Excuse me, anybody, has anybody seen Eve? Oh, no, oh, oh gee whiz, I, I'm married to Michelle. I don't want to get tangled up with another lady. Oh. All right, all right, maybe CM Punk's around here. Oh, I, I'm just, I'm going to go home. I got my parking validated already. <laughs> no, 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 Big Bad Mark Calloway, don't go. Oh, I stepped in a bag of feces. Yeah, I think that covers it pretty well. It does it? Does that cover the feud? Okay, post rumble. Post rumble? Uh Foley. Oh, Cactus uh Cactus Jack interrupts the CM Punk uh rock match. What? Yeah, he shows up and he throws tax down. Punk takes the tax because he's a fucking winner. And then uh <laughs> Rock gets the win, but Cactus Jack is like, I'm here because nobody uh Nobody can handle the truth, and the truth is I'm going to take The Undertaker down at WrestleMania. Oh, and then dong. Foley yeah. gets hit with a big dong. <laughs> Just and then it's The big Undertaker. Big Dick Dudley, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. I think it's a dong. I always assumed it was bong. Oh, I think it's a dong. Yeah? I think you hear that dong, and you, you, you pee yourself. I think also— uh, you got to fear the dong. I'd like to see Cactus Jack uh, work his way through all the ministry, ministry like, druids at the WrestleMania entrance. Like, I'd want to see him just fucking batter his way with the— Lighting them all on fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I want, stop! I'm an indie wrestler! I want crazy Cactus Jack. All right, all right. And then, so, Elimination Chamber, uh, they, they're still feuding. They're fighting, feuding, fighting, scratching. Yeah, like no match. It's just like every time uh, you you get a promo. Think it just of the promos worse. though between those guys. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, all right. And like, but we're talking like Cactus Jack voice cracking, like mankind craziness. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Undertaker versus Cactus Jack. Uninsurable. <laughs> yeah. The the uninsurable yeah, the versus match the can't streak. Be insured. Steve Dez TV says, "Who would you induct?" To the Hall of Pain. Ooh, Mark Henry's Hall of Pain. Yeah, or Chris Nowinski's. <laughs> or that uh, that um, that museum that's in downtown about Scientology, about psychiatry. Oh yeah, the death museum. No, the death museum is cool. There's the Psychiatry Kills Museum. What? On Sunset. Oh, that's right. I, have you ever been to the death museum? No. I. They've got great T-shirts. The, do they? That's what I've seen. Better than what we got? We're working on it. Yeah. Did it look, you mean this great t-shirt right here? <laughs> that thermal that you've just drawn a uh, dink the clown on? A dink? You mean Batiste, Batiste Doink? <laughs> I do mean Batiste Doink. Doink Tista? Doink Tista? That's good. Um, Who would you induct to the Hall of Pain, Steve? Gosh, who deserves it? Who S- doesn't Someone who in, looking for some pain. Uh, uh, this could be Mark Henry's Hall of Pain. Would this go into a feud with Mark Henry? Yeah, because he's gonna induct him into the Hall of Pain. So um, he's gonna he's gonna lay a whooping on him. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry had their time together, right? They were facing each other. They did. Yeah. yeah, that was a good time. I liked it. It was weird. It was strange. as much as I like Daniel Bryan. It's like you can't beat him. Come on, have a little heart. Have a little heart. <laughs> have this tight. It's a it's a cat's heart. Oh, have this cat's heart. <laughs> meow meow meow. Dead. Um, goodness. 
Goodness, goodness. You uh, know who I say? Who? Michael Cole. Oh, wow. Yeah, you want to. that be... turns into a feud? You want to watch that? Hey, he's getting inducted into the Hall of Pain. JR got his ass lit on fire by Kane. That's true. He got the mandible claw by Mick Foley. He is a hardcore announcer. You Michael Cole wants to earn his stripes. I'd like to see that. And I'd like, I'd like three weeks straight of every episode on Raw, Mark Henry does the world's strongest slam on Michael Cole through a table. Yeah. Like every day you think it's going to be different. Like, so the first time Mark Henry comes out and says, Michael Cole. And then he just grabs him, get like, he gets out of the ring, picks him up and then ruins the table. Yeah. The next week he's like, I came out here to apologize to Michael Cole. And then Lawler goes, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 stop, stop. And, he's, and then Mark, and then Mark Henry's like, oh, you're going to stop me? He goes, no, I had a heart attack. No, no, I'm just, no, I'm I, just I, asking you to stop. I like it. No, Lawler should be like, no, 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 stop. And then Lawler gets up, grabs his papers, and wheels his chair away. Over Moves his the crown like, okay, go ahead. Yeah. And then he slams it. And then the third time, Michael Cole's ready, and his plastic uh, his plastic bubble is back. Right. And then and JBL's there and like, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. And then rips down all the walls. Yeah. And Mark Henry's like, Michael Cole. And then he picks him up, and then he's World's Strongest slams him off the top of the glass case through a table. Nice. I like that. And like liter- and then after that, you never hear about it again. No resolution. Everything's fine. Except for we never see Michael Cole again. His head <laughs> pops off on the third one. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Like that's stepping just, on that's a Barbie doll. That's just physics. Doll. Yeah. That's just pressure. Uh, Michael Cole. <laughs> God, that would be great. That's That sells itself. All he's got to do is say that's the name. That's worse than the dong. Yeah. All he's got to do is you say the name of the person you're going to world Strongest Slam. Yeah. And then you world Strongest Slam them. Yeah. You live up to the hype. Uh S.C. Hawkins 37 says, hey, guys, is Jeff still in the fish tank? Uh, Jeff Hardy? He's, yeah, he's referring to Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy, a few episodes back, uh, unbeknownst to me, Steve set this up apparently, he's uh, our new correspondent, which I honestly, I think that's a terrible choice. I feel like we don't get enough coverage of Impact, so I wanted to have a correspondent who's part of the Impact community as well as a hard-hitting wrestling journalist. Journalist. <laughs> journal, journalist. A hard-hustling, hard-hustling wrestling journalist. Hard-hustling journalist. Yeah, a hard-hustling general wrist. I don't think we should have Yoshitatsu do our PR because it's <laughs> It's getting a little jumbled. You're reading our, our press reading, releases. All I'm doing is reading the copy that's in front of me. I'm, I'm just trying to be a professional. So. Look, I know we need more order here with the GM and everything. I think it's a little out of control. Things are falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Jeff Hardy covered the opening of Hulk Hogan's new restaurant, Hogan's, Hogan's Beach, Beach in Florida. and at the Which time, also is the name of that woman who he never talks about. Hogan's Beach. <laughs> uh, so listen to the episode "Trapped in an Aquarium" if you if you haven't heard it yet to to hear his full report. But at the time, he was trapped in the aquarium. He was trapped in the fish tank, and uh, I assumed he was fine. So I, I think we need to call him up for SC Hawkins' thirty seven sake and and see if Jeff's okay. So uh, don't just fucking look at me like that. <laughs> call him up. You just look at me in your thermal <laughs> and your tux. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. Am I, am I you dying? hired him? Yeah, but I didn't. He's not on assignment anymore. Well, we have to All make right, sure I'm he's dialing. alive I'm in dialing. order to have another assignment. It's ringing. Give him an, an assignment. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Hello. 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 Jeff. Hello. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> it's Scott Narver and Steve Sears with Curtain Jerks. Oh, my phone. My phone. Shit, my phone. Yeah, it's it's on and... <laughs> I must have answered it with my knuckles. Jeff, are you are you there? Yeah. <laughs> are you still in the fish tank at Hogan's Beach? No, nah, man, I got some serious bad news for you guys. <laughs> I don't know how that could be, but all right, Jeff, what's the serious bad news? I fell out of the fish tank. <laughs> fell out of it, crashed through it? What do you mean? Give us details. I was climbing up into the ventilation shift. Shan- Sh- shift. <laughs> what are you saying? Hey. I was climbing up into the ventilation shifts because that's what my job is here at Hogan's Beach. I climb into the vents and crawl around like Die Hard. Opening <laughs> January 13th. Wait, February 13th for Valentine's Day. No, his he's not Die Hard. His name's John McClane. It's not a person. Yeah, the Die Hard shift. <laughs> Jeff, you... Look, let me finish my story, all right? right? I was climbing out of the fish tank, and I get into a ventilation shift, which is a ventilation shaft, but you have to work up there, so it's a shift. And I smelled a delicious coconut shrimp skewer, and that's all I wanted because that's what you get at Hogan's <laughs> Beach. Delicious burgers with a sushi top with French fry soup. 
And I got French it. French fry soup. And I got it. And I went to the bathroom and I realized I'd left the aquarium. And now I can't get back in. <laughs> Jeff. I'm trying I, to make sure that the lobsters in the tank are still alive. Jeff, I don't know what to be more upset about. The fact that you are trying to get back into the fish tank, that you've now also gotten a job at Hogan's Beach, so you're you're overextending yourself because Steve's got to give you another assignment here at some point. Are you eating ice or frozen fish? What's going on? I'm having a Mai Tai. It's a restaurant with, on the beach, Hogan's Beach. Stop knocking. Like, a lobster's not going to let you into the aquarium. You know what, Scott and Oliver, Steve Sears, the Curtain Jerks, you're absolutely right. I guess I'm just going to eat these coconut shrimp skewers on the floor of the women's bathroom. And I'm going to think about what I can do to be a better person. Are you okay? I'm always okay. <laughs> you said that in the most pouty way possible. No, I'm always okay. You you don't sound okay. Just smile. What? Smile. How can you hear if I'm smiling Smile. Over the phone? I want you How to smile. How can you hear if I'm smiling smile. over the phone? Smile. Don't paint it on either. Actually, smile. All right. Smile. I'm smiling. Are you? A little bit. A lot of bit. Come oh. on. Come on, smile. Okay. There it is. All right, Jeff, we're going to go. Any words uh, for your fans? Yeah. Tell Hogan I apologize for doing that laser surgery on him. <laughs> it's not is the you? laser spines. In, it's not their fault. He went under, and then I rolled in, and I rolled him out into the parking lot, and I used this laser I bought from this Chinese guy. <laughs> All right, Jeff. That's why I work for free at his restaurant. <laughs> All right, Jeff. We got to go. Yeah, me too. Me too, Scott Narver, Steve Sears, a curtain jerks. <laughs> okay, bye. I can't believe Jeff Hardy did laser surgery on Hogan. And that's why Hogan's suing that guy. Yeah, the uh, that guy. That's an entire institute. It's the laser. Sp it's the spinal laser institute. I don't know. I have poor eyesight. What do I know? Well, maybe you should have somebody work on your spine through your eyes. Well, I'll have Jeff Hardy do it if he ever gets back here. I don't think he's a doctor. <laughs> I don't think you're okay. That, I burped for real. You burped oh. for fake. What? Burp. I, I will. Burp. Hey, listeners. I'm burping. That sounded fake. It was dry. Do I burped rewind. a lot beforehand. It I know, was real. Oh, that sounds just uh. fucking horrendous. Yeah, well, it's one of those things you can do when you're a brother that you can burp on command. All right. Well, I hope that answers. Uh, I hope that we know. It's a shame that Jeff was not still in the fish tank aquarium. Well, he's close enough. Zishu says, who do you think is the least funny comedian? Why are you looking at me? Hmm? What do you? What, 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 what do I? Why are we looking at each other? <laughs> no reason. As soon as you said that, all we did was stare at each other. Yeah, it's not like we've been doing that this entire podcast. You stupid, unfunny you fuck. You stupid, just morose mother. Put your props down. <laughs> put this. I'm cutting cheese with this guitar. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, that's a. That's you. A you've made a defense of Carrot Top before in the past. Carrot Top Live was funny. He was. Once he got the all the props down, it was like all right. Uh, th then I remember I, he was the first comedian I actually ever saw live first stand up I ever saw live in Vegas and then he did all the props and then he says hey guys you want to see the trailer for my new movie and it was chairman of the board so they show the full trailer and it you know didn't look not good. much reaction at all from the, the big crowd I think it was the MGM grand um, and uh, nothing and so he goes like hey guys what'd you think like uh, 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 and he goes I don't care. I get paid either way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that was what started. It was just like, it was a really hilarious set. Then That's how we started the show. No, that was, that was like the midway point of the show. Um, oh, for me, I guess it's always just someone that I think is, is phony or someone that's just not really dedicated. I'm one of those guys that I, I haven't seen enough of Dane cook, but I've never been a big Dane cook. I guy. was going to say Dane cook too. I don't think – now, what I'm saying is I don't think that he's not a funny guy. I think he's not funny for me. Like, it's not my thing. Like, he's the guy that you want to hang out with at a party that has really awesome stories. That's kind of what I'm feeling. And it's energetic and fun, but it's like, I'm not laughing. Yeah, it's not – I wouldn't – it's it's so easy to go into sort of Dane Cook bashing, but I feel like it takes a lot of effort to do that. Yeah. I think what I've – when I've heard his stuff, I've laughed. And but I always feel like it's so much. It seems like a one on one sort of basis for the jokes that he tells. Yeah. And then like any sort of arena stuff always like really sort of trips me out. It's like what he sold out Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Like, to why? hang out with your buddy. 
Yeah. Just invite him over for a beer. Yeah, just have a beer with him. But I guess you can't hang out with people that are selling out Madison Square Garden. The other thing is uh, uh, Dave Chappelle, I think, is hilarious. I think he's great. I like yeah. The best for me is I like Pryor. Like, it, they're sort of the worst, but my favorite, I think, is Pryor because I just saw, like, some of his – they did a stand-up thing on – if they did stand up on Comedy Central the other night. It was bizarre. It was absolutely amazing. But they did one of the late night, uh, late night stash. I think it was. Yeah, like the uncensored sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, and it was incredible. It was awesome. All right, but the question is, who's the least favorite, Mister Politician? All right, no, I think it's uh, Dane Cook is really up there. He after Chappelle was gone for a year and no one had seen him, and he did right. that like six hour set at the Laugh Factory, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, it was incredible!" And then like three weeks later, Dane Cook was like. Yeah, and I just did a nine-hour set, and it was like, what? Come on, man. Is it because you just found out people could do that, or did you have no place to go that night? Mm -hmm. You know, it's also when he sort of branched out and started making movies, it wasn't like Steve Martin making movies. No. It was very like, what are you doing? What is this? Oh, you're in that formula movie? Shouldn't you do something that speaks to yourself? All right. Wrestling memes, wrestling underscore memes, they've got – the best wrestling memes that there are. And they sent us a jerk tweet. So they say, wrestling meme says, have you ever thought of having Mike Adamley on the podcast? Hashtag Jeff Harvey. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I bash him a lot. I, as I say, uh, wrestling memes has the greatest wrestling memes that there are. Facebook.com slash wrestling memes and Twitter wrestling underscore memes have the best wrestling memes. The funniest ones, all of the wrestling memes or Mike Adamley, which is a pretty big insult. That's pretty good. I was about to say also, uh, what a big deal for wrestling memes that Mike Adamley tweeted them asking them to ask us that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but would I have him on the podcast? Absolutely. I would I would, I would, would love to have him on here. Is he on the Twitter? Uh, I don't know. He must be. He has to be. I don't know if he wants to get shit from wrestling fans all the time, you know? I've, you don't have a choice. If, you're, uh, if you do anything wrestling related, you're going to get shit from wrestling fans no matter what. Oh, we are a vocal Is that right? Bunch. At a Steve Sears. <laughs> oh, please hand it out. Uh, you can find out how many Twitter followers I have. Guess what? It's less than twelve. <laughs> oh, three. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm looking here. Not Mike Adamley. Not Mike Adamley. There's a lot of people with not Mike Adamley as a name. Maybe which is they're a good way really to go. excited about who they're not. So far, yeah, I don't, I don't see one. But I'll, I'll do more research. But, yes, I would totally love to have Mike Adamley on the podcast so he doesn't want to talk wrestling with us. No, 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 no. So he can defend himself, Scott. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, we love jerk tweets. Send them each and every week. Uh, oh, we have another rejected towel we got to play right here. Uh, so we're going to get that uh, queued up, and uh, here you go. <sighs> Eve, hi. It's uh, it's Gary. Uh I saw you uh, drop the title tonight in Houston, and I'm here at the Hilton, but I'm not sure what floor you're on. And I just wanted to say, I thought we really had a connection, and I just want to let you know, I totally believe in you. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm in the lobby. I'm in the elevator lobby on the third floor, and there's only 17 more floors for me to check, but I'm not sure which room you're... (laughs) Wow, that was a desperate, desperate fan. Desperate or dedicated, Scott? Uh, desperated. Uh, I watched that Eve video that, of her, her farewell video. Uh huh. She's got some really big hair. Beautiful <laughs> eyes. Big chin. Striking She's got a shoulder. Brooke Hogan chin. No, does she? Yeah, they got walnut crackers. Yeah, well, they also look like they could bench press a, a, a me or you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, or I'm a, into that. Or a us. <laughs> Uh, another news story here that's that's interesting that uh, we we have to get to before we wrap up the show is DX is rumored to headline the WWE Hall of Fame 2013. Now I thought it was going to be Mick Foley. I don't think you need bigger than Mick Foley. That's the headlining what the Hall of Fame is sort of a is that necessary? I yeah I mean it's nice to have a marquee name as a top guy. It makes everybody else feel like a bag of shit. But yeah. uh, I I don't know. I I think no I do know. Declaratively, Mick Foley should be your headliner. The guy's done a ton. He's going to give a tremendous speech. But instead, they're talking DX, which would also make Shawn Michaels the second-time Hall of Famer, along with Ric Flair. So, I don't know. Is this necessary? I mean, I feel like, is there a, is there a greater roster of people who deserve a second ring? Like, more so than DX? That's what I'm wondering. Like, 
It's one of those things. NWO. Yeah, NWO. Uh, hey yo. <laughs> yes, and they all had catchphrases. <laughs> yes, they did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I think wrestling. I'm like, oh yeah, catchphrases. Um, let's see. Who else is in the Hall of Fame? Who else is in the Hall of Fame? A yeah. bunch of people are in the Hall of Fame. There's there's all kinds of people. Uh, you got Roddy Roddy Piper. I'd like to see him have a second one just for his work and they live. <laughs> so just put it. He's also the celebrity one. Yeah, I see. Iron Sheik! Iron Sheik! Oh, Iron Sheik! I, you frightened me away from the microphone. Get away from the microphone. Iron Sheik, take a microphone. Iron Sheik be Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame two time. Aren't you, you were already in the Hall of uh, Fame. Hall of Fame 2005 with faggot cricket dick Hulk Hogan. Oh, wow. Uh, well, I want to do over. You want a duel? Do over. You want a second uh, Hall of Fame ring? Hall of Fame ring for my dick. I'm sorry? Put it on my dick. Put the Hall of Fame ring. Find a big enough ring for this massive dick. Ah, jeez. Iran, dick. Number one. USA dick. Ha! Uh, God. That I was spit a- on your USA dick. <laughs> that was a hell of a shot, Iron Sheik. Uh, I put your dick in the camera clutch and spit on it. Oh, no, no, thank you. And then I put it in your own ass and make you a humpback. No, thank you. Um, so you Shawn want- Michaels, you have one eye. The other eye I poke with my dick and make it lazy. Jesus, that's incredibly accurate. Uh, who would, if you were to get a second Hall of Fame ring for your parts, uh, who would your uh, who would induct you? Who induct Iron Sheik? Adamantium Sheik, baby, baby, induct me into Hall of Fame. Your infant. My infant. The infant you wear around your neck like a necklace. Look at him. He's speaking now for everyone. Fuck you in your ass and make you humble. I'm fucking the shit out of you. I'm fucking of him. Oh, okay, okay. Does that little baby need a ring also? Yeah, baby need a ring too. Baby go into Hall of Fame. and name's Chic Baby Baby. Have a Hall of Fame ring. Is he going to wear like a little crown? He wear it over his neck. Oh, like a choker. Yeah, like a choker. Because he's into that. He's, uh, he's dark. <laughs> this is a dark inf- this is dark for an infant. I don't want to be in the class of Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan no good faggot. Okay, yikes. All right, take it Hulk easy. Hogan eats his own dick off his ass. Jesus, what a, that's a hell of a meal to prepare. Bully Ray is marrying a Hulk Hogan a son. Two dicks to clash together. No, it's actually his daughter, Brooke Hogan. Oh, you cannot tell me that is a woman. I think it's a woman. It is another woman. That is a boy she's person. A it's a boy person with a big old flappy dick. That's a, that's a lovely lady. And I think, based on this interview, I think you might have a chance of being in the Hall of Fame. You say I marry her? What? What? You say I married Brooke Hogan? No, no, I said you called me a faggot person. No, no, I wasn't. I, I was... crush your dick. Please don't. Give me your dick. I crush. Well, please don't. Yeah, yeah. Ah! 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 You're in the Hall of Fame. You're in the Hall of Fame. Ah, yes, ah. two-time Hall of Fame Iron Sheik champion. God, it looks like a Play-Doh that's been smushed in the middle. Scott, Are you okay? No. What happened? He crushed my dick. <laughs> It looked bad. Yeah, it felt worse. I just got out of the harm's way. Like yeah, I, you seem to do that every fucking time. Hey, I didn't want to tell you this, but I have uh, shiki sense. Oh, what? I have shiki sense. So you just know when he's going to be crushing it's like dicks? It's like spider sense, but it's shiki sense. For so. dick crushings. Uh, for Iron Sheik showings, I just get out of here. I sense Iron Sheik. It's like it's like Spider Man with Spidey sense, but I sense Every Iron Sheik. Every time that happens, I see the silk curtains over by the penthouse window, and all I see are your big shoes sticking out from underneath them. I don't have big feet. You wear big shoes though. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I don't have big feet. I'm I like Krusty the Clown. Yeah, I know. You wear gigantic <laughs> shoes. I wear bigger shoes. So Scott, where did you go, Scott? <laughs> ah, oh, look, look at who put the air back in his dick to try and reinflate. No, 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 okay, all right, let's take it easy. You're in the Hall of Fame, you're in the Hall of Fame, and you're going to get a Hall of Fame ring. Put my thumb in your mouth. What? Put my thumb in I your mouth. I don't want to do that. Put my thumb in your mouth. I don't want to do that. Scott. Be Brian Bear, put my thumb in your mouth. No, oh, 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 look at you. You think you're a killer bee? Oh, I'm a killer bee. Oh, Ultimate oh, Warrior, oh, I put my dick in your face. Oh. He's gone. Scott, he's gone. Yeah, I know. How did you just know? You I just, just know. I get out of here. When trouble's coming, I get out the way. That's disgusting. I had a thumb in my mouth. <laughs> well, what can you do? Well, I guess I know what that means. That it's the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> and it's time to go shower. Yeah, as soon as I feel humiliated, I know we've made it to the end of another show. Next week, we will have more with the race to Curtain Jerks GM. 
course, you, we need your vote this week of who will survive of the survival debate. You heard them speak. You heard Randy Orton's feces and you heard Rey Mysterio. Who do you want to survive? Vote at our Facebook.com slash uh, Curtain Jerks, Twitter.com slash Curtain Jerks, and Curtain Jerks at gmail.com. Send us your vote wherever it may be. We'll count it up and we'll let you know the results. And we'll have more next week. So for Scott, for Scott Narver, what the fuck happened? Hey, 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 hey. Good job. Hey, good job, too. I, but she scares me. I gotta, I gotta. Yeah, you're still flustered. I am flustered. You think you're flustered? Look at this dick! <laughs> I'm Scott Narver. I'm Steve Sears. Have a kick-ass week. Scott, what a great show today. One of the best. Always the best. Great bests. If you want to get interactive with Curtain Jerks, which I know you do, Steve. I, absolutely. That would be another great best thing to do. Go to Facebook.com slash Curtain Jerks. Hey, that's a great place to see photos of you with wrestlers and interact Looking with stupid. us. I look stupid. Hey, you look pretty classy. But yeah, get interactive with us. You can talk with us on there. We post matches, photos, videos, all kinds of stuff. Is there another way we can interact with our fans? We can. We can interact with all these jerks at Twitter. Twitter.com slash Curtain Jerks. What a great Twitter handle. We tweet all the time. We, we tweet at breakfast. Tweets. We do live tweets of shows, live tweets of live events. I should wake up for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, you should. You could tweet it. And of course, listening to Curtain Jerks is massively important listen to curtain jerks on comedy podcast network.com stitcher radio and itunes all free rate and review us on itunes it makes oh, a big difference that's to us. huge yeah that's huge fantastic. it makes us a global phenomenon Receive this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit comedypodcastnetwork.com.